Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. I'm making this video sort of off the cuff, so to speak. I don't really have a script or really even talking points that I want to cover with you guys. I'm just reading into a topic around resin 3D printing that you might not already be aware of, but I want to bring some visibility to because I don't think it's a very good thing and I'm not really happy with the direction that it's going and I don't think it's gonna benefit the community at all and help increase the exposure and bring more people into resin 3D printing. And what I wanna talk with you about is this concept of Chitu Systems, the makers of the boards that go in a lot of the resin 3D printers that I've shown off on this channel. It's the interface that you're working with that's the very common interface that you find on most resin 3D printers. It works great and it's fantastic. They are also the makers of Cheeto Box, which I regularly use. I really like Cheeto Box. And that's the primary slicer that I use for slicing all of my resin 3D prints that you pretty much see in all of my videos. Or even if you're one of my Patreon members, you'll see that all of the profiles and settings that I share with my Patreon members are all for Cheeto Box. And I haven't gone through the process of setting that up for Lychee Slicer or even Prusa Slicer. And I'm sure there's others out there that I'm forgetting in the mix here, but uh, Cheeto Box is the one that I primarily use. And if you're not already aware, Cheeto Box is rolling out or in the process of rolling out a Cheeto Box Pro application. So bravo, they're, they're really increasing the application and functionality that's available within the product. And it's a paid subscription service. It's an annual subscription service that costs, I think it's $180. I'll confirm that and put it on the screen here. It's an $180 annual subscription for that software. That is pretty crazy and not anything that you typically see here in the 3D printing community. I mean, you had Simplify 3D, which I also own and I still use and it's not being supported and I, to this day, I regret still using it and why haven't I moved away from it? I don't know. But uh, it's not really the price that bothers me. Well, it does a little bit but it's the idea of what they're now doing with their resin printers and the boards that they're helping supply out to the resin manufacturers, these printer manufacturers, where you're now only going to be able to use Cheeto Box Pro to run your 3D printed files on any of the machines that are using a Cheeto Systems board. So this is a large discussion is going online that I'm seeing brewing within Facebook groups, on Discord channels, on Reddit, all about this topic of now you're gonna be locked in to using Cheeto Box Pro to slice your files. You, you can't use Prusa, you can't use Lychee. Well, technically they're saying you can, you can do all of your support setup and all that and then export that as an STL and then run that through Cheeto Box Pro. It's an additional step and you're gonna have to pay, that's the kicker there, you're gonna have to pay them that $180 annual fee just to be able to print on a 3D printer that you've already paid a good amount of money on. So people are finding this out with the, with the new Frozen Sonic Mini 8K resin 3D printer that I talked about in a video a handful of weeks ago. They're also running into this with some of the new EPAX machines. Users are bringing this up that they're no longer able to slice their files using Lightsheet, which is one of the big competitors. And Prusa Slicer is coming out with some fantastic upgrades of their own and now supports other printers being able to slice and export files through their software. By the way, they've got paint on supports, which is just the like one of the coolest features that I've seen on any of the slicers. Forget that it's resin with FDM or not, it's the ability to paint on those and specifically specify where you want them to be is in a really nice way to handle things. But it's the direction that this is going in that they're trying to lock in into the consumer being stuck with using a specific slicer that you're going to have to fork over additional money for to actually run your 3D prints that just rubs me entirely wrong. And it, honestly, it kind of reminds me of back in 2015, my first 3D printer was a MakerBot Mini. Remember MakerBot? Where is MakerBot now? You don't hear anything about MakerBot and their 3D printers. I'm sure they're still around, but you don't see people regularly posting and building and making things with those machines. And they built this all-inclusive ecosystem with their products where you could only use or you should only use their filaments. If you wanted to repair anything, you're kind of screwed with 
that. It's, and it's not exactly the same situation here, I know, between their software that they're producing and the boards that are going into all these different printers, but it's not that far off. What's to prevent you from, let's say, uh, in six months time, Cheeto Systems blocking you from actually exporting a file from another system and that you sliced in Lychee or in Prusa Slicer or in some other third, fourth party slicer that was created. And then when you try to run that through Cheetu, it sees that it wasn't created in their system and completely blocks it and shuts it down. That's not outside the realm of possibility with software these days. It's gonna be able to see some metadata about the file that you're bringing into the software. All in all, I'm just trying to bring some attention to this. I don't really have much to say other than it's their business. They can handle the things that they wanna do, how they wanna handle it, what they wanna charge. It's entirely up to them. Us as consumers, it's us for us to decide if we want to buy into and support these things. But it's gonna be something that you need to be aware of that when you're buying machines here in the upcoming months and years, or if you're interested in getting started with resin 3D printers, you're potentially gonna to have to fork over a lot of money just to slice the files for your 3D printer. And yes, I know some of these machines are already coming with, oh, you're gonna get six months or a year free of the slicer, but what about after that? What about three years after that? That's a lot of money that someone's gonna to have to fork over to continue doing this. And to be honest, Cheetah Box isn't the most stable slicer as it is. I still have regular crashes on mine. I still haven't seen a pro version of Cheetah Box Pro that's available. I'm not saying that Lychee or Prusa or any of the slicers are perfect. I'm not in love with any of them, but I like the ability for me to be able to jump in and out of any one of those when I see fit, when I wanna be able to use those. So just jumping back in as I'm editing this video because I don't think I quite made my point clear enough. I don't really care about the price point. They can charge whatever they want. That's entirely their business and what they think that they can charge, they should go for. Do I think that the price point of $170 a year is right? That's a whole nother topic in itself, but a quick answer, no, I don't. I think it's slightly absurd, but uh, you know, do what you gotta do. But what I do have a big problem with is this idea of tying a printer to a particular slicer and forcing the end user to use that slicer. That costs $170 a year to use. That's gonna offput so many people from wanting to buy the machines that are gonna require that, and it's just gonna prevent more people from wanting to purchase and get into resin 3D printing. I just find it to be a really frustrating thing. It's just, I love resin printing. I love a lot of these companies that are out there trying to produce really great things. The slicing companies, the competition that's there is great. What's great about competition is that it makes products better, plain and simple. But forcing the user's hand is just a silly way of doing business, in my opinion. And inevitably, people are gonna try and find ways to get around whatever systems are in place that's gonna prevent them from using the tools that they wanna use. So it's just something, again, I wanna bring attention to. I feel like I'm ranting a little bit here, but it's something that it's just, I wanna call it out because I'm not hearing it really talked about other than in these smaller bubbles online. So I just wanna bring it out, call it out, and hopefully we can drum up a little bit of noise around this and hopefully find out more information on maybe I'm entirely wrong about all of this. So if I am, that's great and apologies, but if I'm not, we'll find out here in the upcoming months. But thanks so much for watching. Let me down in the comments what you guys think about this whole situation. And you know, if there are other alternatives out there that I'm not thinking of or thinking through, let me know. Hopefully we'll hear some updates and more clarity from Cheeto Box and some of the manufacturers out there that are making these machines of what's going to happen with this when these machines roll out. What's gonna to happen to the most important factor in all of this, us, the consumer, the people that are buying and using these products. Hey, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.